So what I'd like to do is uh, just model a little something here uh, and be able to show you the tools, uh, the poly modeling tools in action. Just give you a little better idea of uh, how they work together. And uh, so in order to do that, I'm just going to model a little, I don't know, helicopter or something like that. So what we have here is, I'm um, just going to grab a cube and we'll just go into shaded mode so that it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. And uh, actually that's a few too many subdivisions, I don't think we need that much detail. We can just go in and add detail uh, later if we need it. So something like that. Alright, so um, I'm just going to start off at sort of the nose and uh, just begin by bringing this out, just translating this out and scaling it down a little bit. And uh, we'll scale it down in both directions. And uh, okay, so that's going to be the, the front of, the, of this uh, helicopter or airplane or something. I don't know yet what it's going to be. I'm just going to have to make this up as I go along. So um, generally when modeling, it's a good idea to actually have a reference. Uh, so you sort of have a rough idea of where you're headed. But uh, seeing as I'm a highly trained professional, I'll uh, just get away this time with doing it without a reference. Okay, so we're just going to uh, translate this all down a little bit and uh, sort of make a nice angular front for the whole nose bit. There we go. Something like that. Okay, now um, I want to scale in the sides here a little bit. Just bring them in a little bit. But before I do that, one of the things is that this is all now quite straight, and I need to uh, subdivide this a little bit. So um, I'll just use my uh, Add Edge tool. And uh, one of the cool things about the Add, add Edge tool is, is uh, I can put on the um, control keys, for example, control key will then add a point exactly in the middle of the edge always so that uh, I don't have to necessarily you know, use the uh, subdivide edge with the split control or split evenly or whatever like that. So I can snap down there uh, and uh, let's start a new one. Now another cool thing about the uh, add edge tool actually is that if I hold down the alt key I can put it right in the middle and it'll automatically add edges to other polygons sort of like that. Uh, which is pretty cool because you can just draw in the middle of a polygon and it'll, it'll update it and uh, automatically add the other edges for you. But right now I just want to split that evenly. Okay, and uh, we're just going to do the same on the bottom. Well, on the bottom I could actually just uh, put a Shift D and that'll automatically connect those two and then draw the other two edges here just manually. There we go. Okay, so uh, we need to translate this fellow here a little bit. Well, actually we need to translate both of them, but let's just do one by one. And um, if I actually go into global, uh, sorry, local mode, I can just translate it nicely along the line here, and then just bring it out a little bit, something like that. So it's flush with the others. And then this one here we'll uh, do a little bit differently. We'll, um, let's see now, we'll just translate these out a little bit. That's going to be some sort of helicopter cockpit type thing, so we're going to have to uh, just go with what we have and see what looks best and modify it later if we need to. So, now let's just move on a little bit, and uh, okay, these edges up here need to be sort of rounded off a little bit. Now, I, either I could bevel them or something like that, but I think I'll just translate them down for now. And uh, we'll just go into global there, translate these guys down a little bit. Okay, that's beginning to look more like something usable. Maybe just bring these bottom guys just down for a little bit more rounded appearance there. This is not going to be the mother of all modeled helicopters, or airplanes or whatever, spaceship, whatever I decide to make it into, but uh, it'll just give you a rough idea. Now, uh, okay, let's uh, extrude the back here. We need a little bit more area in back. Now, either could translate it, but I think I'm going to want those subdivisions later, so I'm going to use an extrude. Um, one thing that's actually quite good to know is if I, if I hit Control D, I actually uh, put an extrude operator on there, sort of, or actually it's a extrude with a zero, and then I can put some move components in, but uh, it, it's, so it's, it's essentially a duplicate. However, if I uh, go into my menu and just hit Duplicate Polygons, uh, what it will do is it'll actually, there we go, bring that along, but also it'll put a hard edge there. And if you actually look at these hard edges, just grab one of these, for example, and just move it, you'll see that there's actually a whole polygon uh, thing going on there. And uh, basically what that is, let's just grab this guy, is it duplicates the entire polygon surface, uh, creating an entire independent polygon thing which is obviously not what I wanted at that point. Uh, but duplicate polygon can be really useful. Um, again, I'll just maybe do it on this one up here. And we'll just do duplicate polygons. And uh, it now has that bit as just a separate little uh, thing. Okay, so um, and that'll use the duplicate uh, uh, settings that you have. 
Another one that's uh, probably quite useful to uh, know is if you have the whole guys here and you do an extrude operator, um, th this window pops up. There are, there are some fairly useful uh, uh, ones in here. Um, for example, the merge operator, which now basically what that'll do is if I, uh, for example, scale these guys or transform them, there we go. You'll see that it all transforms them uh, separately now. So the merge basically decides whether these are going to be treated individually, each polygon is treated individually, or together as, uh, sorry, as one surface. So that's a good one to know. Uh, the skirting ratio and things we'll actually go into a little bit later. I'm going to be needing that, I think, uh, when I go into it. But unfortunately, I don't think that's particularly good right there. So we're just going to take that off. All right, so we have a little bit more detail. Now we need to uh, go in and actually uh, start working with this because uh, as such, this is not particularly fine looking. So I'm just going to pull this one out a little bit and um, then just take the top one and pull that one out a little bit. So we're getting that nice uh, sort of shape that you'd expect. And uh, actually, I think I have a little bit too much length here. It's going to be to look a little bit funny. So, uh, and I'm not worrying right now for the, you know, I'm just about this, you know, exact shape details and things like that. I can always go in there later and uh, and work with that. One thing I do just notice now is that this particular edge here is not particular nice. So we'll just add another edge in there and fix that one up a little bit. So basically when, when I'm modeling, it's um, pretty much always this way, just adding detail as I go along, wherever it needs detail, and just, you know, refining things. And I mean, the real advantage of working in uh, exercise that at any point you really can go back and then you're never stuck with having you know just destroyed your model by having added some detail and that you can't reverse or done an operator that can't be reversed so we'll just uh, maybe refine this up here at the top as well so I'll just add one there and add one right there okay so now we have uh, sort of the, the hole and we're gonna obviously refine this a little bit later on but for now that's cool okay so let's uh, actually go back to this front window because that's sort of looking a little bit weird to me um, I want to add a little bit of window frame here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab these guys. And now there's two different ways I can do this. I can either uh, duplicate them uh, and inset them, or, uh, well, we actually have a whole inset polygon tool now. Now, again, um, basically when I do an inset, I can either have them merged as one and inset them all together, um, which is fine. Or if I maybe wanted them as separate windows, I can just do that as like this, and maybe a little bit less inset, and maybe... Uh, bring them down a little bit and actually what I'm going to do is then I'm going to duplicate them again just so we get that nice flat edge and just bring them just a little bit in so I have a nice sort of offset edge there we go so that's uh, already looking a little bit better now I'm not particularly happy with the angle of this window right here so what I'm just going to do is grab these guys and just uh, bring them in a little bit and we'll just scale them in a little bit like that just to make it a little bit more streamlined. There we go. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better. Now, we um, obviously later we can go in and set hard edges and all that sort of thing if we need to, and uh, you know modify it to to suit whatever we want to do. But uh, for now, we're just you know looking at making a rough little helicopter thing. It's not as is also. Oops, uh, that I didn't want to do. I just selected all the edges. Uh, I can always hit an undo, but actually what I'll do is I'll just grab them again. It's just as fast, and we'll just bring them in so that it has a nice coherency in the shape. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the tail. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just actually we'll just put an extrude on this guy here, and uh, we'll just go to extrude along axis. And we want a little bit more than that, and uh, we actually want to scale it down, and we want to scale it down along the Y. No, sorry. Wrong along the local axis, so probably along the Z here, and also along the X. And actually what I want is, I don't want this per subdivision, but I want some more subdivisions because I'll need the detail uh, in the tail later on. And I actually think, you know, I could put in a little bit more length or just put in a translation just to make it a little bit longer. Okay, and actually we could also put a translation up, oops, not in Z, in X. There we go. Okay, something like that, because this is going to be whatever it is, and uh, that looks a little bit better. Okay, um, the rest, uh, da, 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 we don't really need it, that's all fine. Okay, there we go. So we'll just uh, frame that up again, have a look and see what we have here, that's looking fine. Now I think it's uh, time to sort of go to the end of the tail here, and actually I 
would like one more subdivision right there. So I'll just shift D and it'll add in a subdivision. And what I see now is that it's, it's a little bit hard for me actually to slide that edge back and forth now. So this would have been a good time if I go in here and do the split control. Because now what I want is I actually want the edge a little bit. I'm going to make this sort of rear fins. And now I can actually just slide it down without changing the proportions. So we're just going to grab our uh, edges here. And you'll see that if I zoom up here, I just grab these two edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the back fins, sort of control fins or airlons or whatever they're called. Uh, and to do that, again, I can just extrude. And I'm just going to extrude the edges out. Okay, and again, we have and w our controls, and what's going to be important here is the skirting ratio. So um, let's just go into our sort of wind or uh, manipulators and just drag them out. I could also use length in this case, but uh, I like to have the sort of manual control and the feedback here. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Now the skirting radio sh ratio I can change. I could also put up some subdivisions. Uh, but you'll see that the, the skirting ratio really goes per subdivision if you have them. So I think I'm just going to leave it like this. And, uh, well, you know, actually that was probably pretty much fine. I don't think we really... That's pretty good. However, I think this is still too long at the end. So either I could use, like, my scaling, uh, and uh, that should be an X. We could scale it down. There we go. And maybe we could actually translate it in X a little bit back. I could, of course, use the... Um, actual uh, manipulators here. If I want to, just go in there and just translate them back a little bit. Make a little bit more streamlined. So, there we go. That's our uh, back fins. Now, if we actually uh, zoom in here, we'll uh, just bring these down. I like these to be sort of flush. You could actually snap them and level and stuff like that to make it perfectly, but I'm just eyeballing this. This, is, this will be fine enough for uh, good enough for government work, as they say. Okay, one more thing. Let's just zoom in here. Okay, so now let's uh, move on a little bit and um, let's work on the body a little bit. Now, one thing uh, I see here is that this is an awfully rough edge or a hard edge down here. And maybe what I actually want is it to be a little bit more rounded. So uh, what I'll just do is I'll uh, just select the edges. Whoops, I have to hold down shift there to add my selection. And uh, and I can just use the middle mouse button with the Alt key for an edge loop. And uh, what's actually really useful to know about this one is if I select a um, an edge over here, and I wish to edge loop all the way around, just uh, basically hold down your Alt and middle click. Oops, uh -huh, right, sorry, that was a bit uh, too much. That did an edge ring in that case. And uh, middle click on an offsetted one, so not in the same uh, edge ring, and it'll actually go all the way around. Of course, in this case, that was a little bit too much because it went completely around the helicopter, but uh, if I just maybe sort of use it a little bit intelligently here, I can actually quickly make a ring right around it without having to select every single edge. It takes a little bit of getting used to and uh, just uh, learning how the uh, it selects it, but it, it's very, very fast now to select uh, rings and loops and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to add a little bevel just to uh, round this all off. You can see that looks uh, quite a bit better. I could actually also maybe put a rounding in there, you know, just to create a little bit more rounded uh, front. Oh, why not? Sure. Looks good. Okay. So, uh, and then what I might want to do actually, the other thing that I notice is if you look at the tail, here, the tail is also uh, quite sharp and, and, and sort of and hard-edged. I think I'm going to do the same thing for that, is just add a bevel on that. Now we'll just uh, grab our edges, there we go, and maybe the top ones here. I don't think I want to bevel the tail, because that needs to be quite sharp. But uh, what I actually might want to do is also just bevel this last little round bit at the back here, just to make that just a little bit more streamlined. So something like that. and. Uh, Let's just try it. Actually, you know, I don't know about these here. Might look a little funny if we don't. Oops, undo that. Might look a little funny if we don't do that. So let's just grab that and bevel these guys. Okay, now you see what I can do. There we go. And maybe round it off a little bit. Just need one, don't need a lot. Okay, and. Uh, change how it looks. There, that's probably a little bit better. Now one thing I did notice, however, is that it now did it on my 
the front of my little tail fin things that I was so proud of, which uh, might not be optimal. So I can, uh, there's several things I could do here, but uh, you know what, I think I'll just go in and draw an edge in there. There we go. And if I uh, just right click, go to the other side, oops, uh, draw an edge. You see, I mean, that's the advantage of the edge of the edge uh, creation tools. It really automatically snaps the points, which just makes it really fast to use. And now we'll just uh, move this out in front a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll just select these two points right in here that actually are the, the points. And I'll just move them a little bit further out, which actually then ends up giving our tail just a little bit even more sort of streamlined look to it. Uh, one thing I did notice, however, is that I pulled them down just a little bit too far. And uh, so I'll just go back into my points and just move them down a little bit so that they're sort of coherent with the rest. Okay, and that gives our, our tail a nice sort of streamlined angular look that's uh, quite cool. I think at any rate. Now if the tessellation, you can see that here the tessellation on this is maybe not ideal. Uh, you can see that it reflects light a little bit strangely. I can always go in and add more edges later on or subdivide it more if I need to. But for now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave that because that's that's pretty good. So we have a um, Nicely rounded helicopter here, rounded where we want it to be rounded, angular and aggressive looking where we want it to be angular and aggressive looking. So uh, let's just move on and see what else we can do with this thing. Now I think what we need obviously is something for it to land on. And uh, there's several, several things that we can do. Um, I'm also sort of thinking about the uh, rotors and what we're going to do about that. And actually I decided, I don't, I don't know about rotors, I think maybe... Uh, we need something a little bit more futuristic than uh, rotors. I was going to do some sort of propeller thing, but I think maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do something else instead. But let's just have a look and see. This is completely on the fly. I'm not really planning out this. So Okay, so let's uh, grab this fellow here and just drag him down. And we're going to make a couple little wing things out of this. So uh, little winglets that uh, are going to be used for something. We'll decide what they're used for later on. Okay, and we'll just uh, sort of drag this out, and I say, okay, so either I can, again, like I just did, just drag them out and uh, sort of bring that, or you know what, I could just use the extrude operator. So um, both are okay, doesn't really make any difference. Uh, the only advantage with the extrude operator is really that I have the skirting ratio. So if I have some uh, subdivs, if I, by the way, put the skirting ratio down, it's, uh, it'll just leave it, leave it uh, at a normal angle there. So let's just uh, actually put that up a little bit, something like that. We're going to have to adjust the angles of the whole thing and maybe bevels and all that sort of thing later anyway. So, Okay, so that's pretty good. And now, however, what I don't like is uh, we seem to have these sharp edges. Uh, I'm, I'm not real keen on that. So uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that edge and then, oops, uh, I was going to just delete it off, but that wasn't too great. So what I need to do is I need to then also delete the points off. Basically I should have uh, automatically cleaned it up as well. There we go. So that's what I was intending on doing the first time around. I should have deleted the points as well. Okay, so we now have a nice flat sort of edge uh, on either end. Okay, now let's uh, see what else we can do. We actually need to make these a little bit thicker, I think. I have an idea of maybe putting some uh, sort of propeller things on the wings and I'll want them to be able to hold it. So if I just go into center of geometry, it'll put it automatically in the center of geometry. And the other thing I think is I don't think I want them quite flat. I think I want them a little bit sort of rounded. So we can just do it like that. Okay, now um, let's just have a look and see what we're at now. Okay, I'm not quite satisfied with the way that these are actually uh, bound to the uh, uh, helicopter itself. So what we're going to do is um, oh, we need to uh, hold our middle mouse button. There we go. And just select an edge ring. And maybe there as well. Okay, so now we have a... Oops, I uh, didn't get quite all of them here. And I've... Oh, I see. I got an edge loop. I mean, an edge ring by accident instead of an edge loop. 